My name is Gail Zemble. I'm the Education and Outreach Coordinator for the Nine Mile Creek Watershed District. Thank you everybody for joining us on this lovely evening. And uh, we are very excited to have you here and to have Amber Stoner presenting. For those of you who are not familiar uh, with watersheds or watershed districts, the Nine Mile Creek watershed is about 50 square miles and it encompasses parts of six different cities. So Bloomington, Edina, Richfield, Hopkins, Minnetonka, and Eden Prairie. And a watershed is basically just any area of land that all drains to the same spot. So in our case, it all drains to Nine Mile Creek. Any rain or snow that falls will eventually get to the creek. And so as a watershed district, part of our task is to help protect lakes and creeks and preserve and manage them, as well as encouraging people to get out into the watershed and into our natural resources to enjoy them, such as with this program. We thank you again for your patience in uh, helping us work through all of these different uh, teams and webinar situations. This is still fairly new, but we are excited to try out this new format and to continue to reach people and, and have good conversations with them. We do programs, like I said, and you can find out more about them either through our newsletter or also through our website, ninemilecreek.org. The next one that we have coming up is on Thursday, August 27th, and that is actually our cost share grant information session. So if you are interested in learning more about how to get a grant for a rain garden or any other type of stormwater practice, you can attend that. It will be on this same format, Microsoft Teams. So hopefully you've already got that all figured out and you won't have to worry about it. You can sign up for that on our website as well at ninemilecreek.org. Just a few uh housekeeping things for how to work teams here uh, we have about 15 people signed up or on with us right now so thank you i'm glad it was able to work for you you can feel free to post questions anytime in the q a which looks like two speech bubbles one of them has a little question mark in it and um, we will be taking questions at the end of the presentation but again, you can feel free to post them anytime. And um, if you have technical difficulties or anything, I can try and help you out with those. We also have captions enabled. So if you want captions, you can click on the settings, which looks like a little gear, and then you should be able to turn captions on. Um, also, just for your reference, we will have a recording of this available. It'll be posted to the Nine Mile Creek YouTube channel and then sent out to the email that you registered at when you were registering for this class. Uh, the webinar will be about half an hour or a little longer, a little less, kind of depends on everything. And then um, we'll have time for questions at the very end. Um, so again, you can feel free to post those whenever you like. And Without further ado, I would like to turn it over to our presenter, Amber. Hi, oh, there, I'm live, okay. <laughs> uh, this is gonna be different for me, um, uh, but, uh, cause I don't know who the participants are, who's all on there, um, but uh, Gail said she will respond to me and give, um, you know, feedback, so <laughs> uh, yeah, here we go. Uh, thank you, Gail, and welcome to everybody who's signed on right now. Um, I, uh, my name is Amber Stoner. I am a writer, a walker, a paddler. I'm a mom to two teenagers, and um, I've lived in Eden Prairie for 20 years, and I had discovered the uh, Nine Mile Creek Watershed District um, before I knew that it was part of the watershed district, there's uh, an amazing place behind their main building, Discovery Point, called the Cardinal Creek Conservation Area. And I had taken pictures of that about six or more years ago. And uh, they'll be in this presentation, but um, I'm just really happy to be here tonight um, talking with you all um, and uh, kind of advocating for the watershed district. I'm very happy about it. Oh my, um, I'm also a, uh, a book artist. So the journals that some of you received, um, I handmade them and most of the covers I made, uh, the paper. And um, uh, but I'm currently working on a memoir 
of the almost six years that I lived by the Mississippi River during my childhood. So that's kind of um, been my focus uh, for a while now. Uh, okay, deep breath. All right, I am gonna share the presentation now. So hopefully that all works. Here we go. There we go. I think we got it up. Hopefully everyone can see it. Um, where did you go, Gail? Lost you. All right. Anyway, um, so this is one of the pictures of, uh, of Cardinal Creek. And, um, okay. I will start here. Okay, so why? nature nearby. And uh, we got this cute little critter there who um, we, we found crossing our road some years ago. It's a little baby snapping turtle. You can see the dirt on there just crawled out. And um, we were helping them across the street so they wouldn't get smoked by cars. Um, but um, I'm interested in, in nature nearby to enhance our connection to the the natural world to um, around us and um, to enhance our sense of, of place, a deeper sense of where are we, um, what are these living beings that, uh, that we're interacting with. Um, also, if, uh, if you go outside often enough and like we are walking around my block most, uh, most days, um, every day, a couple of times a day, and um, even when the weather's lousy, we still all try to get out. If it's raining, umbrellas. If it's cold, we bundle up. If it's hot, we let the kids take a shortcut home because they're complaining a lot. <laughs> um, but uh, these daily interactions have been just key to, um, uh, to, to living, basically, to surviving, and especially now, we, we were doing walks before the whole pandemic and everything, um, but uh, they are like pillars in our days right now to walk around. And um, I'll show you some of that when I have some maps later. Um, I'm gonna take a deep breath here because I can't see Gail. And I just kind of talking to myself, so, um, all right, here we go. Mm -hmm. anyway. Doing great, Amber. Oh, Thanks. I can it's hear just you. Fine. Yay. <laughs> okay. It's all good. Uh, <laughs> um, and also, um, I'm interested in local nature because wherever you go, there is nature to be found. Um, in the cracks of sidewalks, um, on the side of the buildings, there's always something. And whenever I go to a new place, I find uh, that very grounding for me to be able to identify, you know, what are what are the plants and the trees and the animals in in this in that place. Um, also, to um, to heal, which that's a big big category. Um, but just there's there's lots out there about the health benefits. Also, just uh, of being being outside, physical, emotional, mental, and um, that's true. Uh, and also. Um, we all need uh, the light and joy daily, regularly. Um, it seems more so now. So um, hopefully after this presentation, you'll be able to go outside and, um, and you know, have a little delight and joy with the nature nearby you. And um, it's also, you know, about home. Um, in 16 years in, in my neighborhood, in this neighborhood, we've walked around, um, this block numerous times and and there's a way that the land holds my memories of my time here and returns them to me often um, just when I see something it'll trigger something and it just um, deepens my relationship and my connection so uh, I feel known I feel like I know the the people and the animals around here so let's see um, There we go. And then why do I pair writing with, with the nature? And um, it's been a long, 
I've been writing forever, long time. Um, it was something in my childhood that I found that was, um, you know, there's no judgment from a, from a piece of paper. And it's a safe place that, for me, continues to accept anything I throw at it. So um, it just is kind of uh, a method that uh, works for me in a lot of ways. And um, writing gives different results than speaking or thinking. And um, it's always fascinating to me what gets written down that might not have come up otherwise. Um, and I like to see, see that. Um, I write to remember, to feel, to pay attention, um, to be here and now to be present, um, you know, to savor those moments. And oh, the, the picture there is, um, is one of the little green frogs on a hosta plant. Actually, it's, it's on a um, lily of the valley leaf within the hosta plants. They're all mixed together in the front of my house. And um, I will check for the little green frog, actually they're gray tree frogs, but they're often green because they're on green leaves. Um, but they, uh, I check for them and I just love seeing them. Sometimes we've seen like 10 out there at night, they'll often go to the, um, to the garage lights, the lights by the garage, and we'll see them, like 10 of them up there uh, waiting for, you know, some bug to fly by. And it just, uh, it's part of the thing that indicates to me that I'm home is these, these gray tree frogs. And, uh, and then if I write about them, then I'll remember. Oh, and I say, okay, next, okay. So most, or, or some of you received uh, one of the handmade journals and um, for others or for any, if you know, if you did receive one, I think Gail sent out a, um, a file in which I took all of the prompts that are in the journal and just put them onto two pages and you can create your own if you weren't able to get a journal um, just by printing it out and cutting them apart and pasting them into a notebook, um, you know, or writing them, transferring them. So that way you um, can use those prompts still in that way, even if you weren't able to receive uh, a journal. But um, the, uh, the method of writing that, uh, that I kind of am going to be talking about here is uh, one that's used in the writing groups. There's a couple of writing groups that I'm a part of. And it's just a very free, intuitive type of writing, um, no judgment, um, that uh, a, a local writer and teacher, Roxanne Sadovsky, leads. And I found it to be a very freeing way to get stuff down on the page. So when you're working with these prompts, these, these short prompts, the, you know, I see, I hear, um, uh, you know, I smell, I remember, then, um, you know, just have fun, you know, go with the flow, see where it takes you, and um, try to keep writing, follow any memories that come up, which is, can be a lot of fun, it's, it's always surprising, um, and we're not worried about spelling, or grammar, or punctuation, and just breathe, and, and write something, anything, and, uh, you can always start again with a prompt if you get stuck. For me, I find that these, these short prompts act as launch pads to, into writing, to whatever, and then they'll go, you know, veer off. Um, and they, the prompts also act as an anchor to retur return to, um, uh, to return to the page if you find you're getting floaty as you're writing. Um, and you can just return to the prompt, start over again, I hear and see where it takes you. And I find that keeps me really engaged with the writing and not thinking too much to kind of get out of my head and just get things written. Um, and I find that these prompts always give something new. You can start, you know, I can write, I see, and I'll get something different in the morning. I'll get something different at night. Um, and so that's, it. it's something that works for me. And then especially with, writing about being outside and nature. So I have some 
suggestions for how to use your nature journal. And uh, these are just suggestions. There is no wrong way to nature journal. However you do it is great. Um, but uh, I just charted, you know, wrote a number of different steps um, that you can follow. Um, so the first one would be to go outside if you're able to. If you're not able to, which happens, um, you can look at a window or look at a picture or a painting of, um, you know, of a natural landscape. And, uh, and you can write from that. That is wonderful. I've done that many times uh, from pictures. And uh, then, you know, go for a saunter, a stroll, a meander uh, to just kind of wander and then see where your attention lands. And I'd like to take, you know, three deep breaths just to focus, focus your attention. Um, and, um, and then you know, just observe what's around you. Look, listen, smell, touch. If you're in a raspberry patch, taste, definitely, absolutely. Apple trees, another good one to taste. Um, and when you can, then begin writing. And you can start at the beginning of the nature journal, or you can go to a prompt that happens to be speaking, kind of speaking to you at that, at that moment. And then just continue writing um, or sketching and um, see what you find. Um, and, and really with the, the touch, I think we tend to be so separate from things. I mean, we can feel the hot human air on our, on our skin. Um, but sometimes we are not reaching out and touching those things. We're often on sidewalks that cut a swath through something. And um, I think it's just really important to reach out and touch a flower, touch a smooth hosta leaf. You know, um, that sensation is, is just really important. Um, it reminds me, um, a friend I would walk with, she, as we were walking on the sidewalk around the neighborhood, uh, she would reach out and, and touch like the willow trees, the weeping willows. And, uh, and I, just, I just love that somebody else did that as well, you know. Um, and you just get to know where things are. Uh, oh, and then if, you're, if you feel you're done writing at that time, you know, I would just end with um, gratitude for being here and now and take some more deep breaths because we all need deep breaths. And um, yeah, uh, what else could, oh, I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show you pictures of my journal. This is not intended to be legible, but we'll see. All right, we're, oh, there we go. All right, so these are some pictures from my journal just to share with you um, how messy it is. It's, it's, it's very messy. And um, to show you that there's lists, I have lists here and here. I don't know if you can see that, here and there. Um, I got scribbles, I got little sketches, things that are clearly supposed to be birds, but you know, whatever. Um, but then like just looking at it, even that terrible sketch of the bird tossing leaves at the bottom there, I'm immediately brought back to that moment that time and I can remember that and and think about that and and kind of relive that joy again and that delight um it's you know reason why I do a lot of this um oh and I want to say uh I always put a date on things somewhere in there. I always try to put a date on things and then where I am and that just kind of helps that you know maintain some sort of organization within the journal itself um, but it's really a, a practice of noticing, noticing what's around you, noticing where you are and then taking note of it. Um, and, uh, when you're writing, like follow the memories and just see where it goes. Cause everything, everything is connected. I could be down by the lake and it will remind me of something of, um, of a grandfather. And so, uh, that's important. And something else in the journal, I have one page is to sketch a nature map of your neighborhood. So I'm gonna show you mine. Hee <laughs> hee, there we go. Um, I 
<laughs> this is not to scale. <laughs> uh, I walked around the neighborhood, I took our usual walk with my daughter, and I brought along my nature journal. I made those lists that, uh, that I showed you on the previous page, just lists to get down what do I notice, what I remember, what I want to take note of, and then I went to do this, uh, this map, this picture. And uh, it, <laughs> it was fun and interesting and a little, um, a little overwhelming because there was, there was so much on my list. And then my drawing ability is, you know, hey. And uh, so I ended up having this here. And this ended up becoming more of kind of my house and what's around it as opposed to the whole neighborhood. I mean, you can see these where I say neighbors, you know, whole other lots next to me. So not to scale, but it's fine. Um, because I ended up putting, you know, what things are important. So when you do, a map, a sketch, which are wonderful for going back and kind of retrieving stories from later. Um, you know, think about what's important to you and what do you want to remember? And that's what you put on your map. Um, where, what, who are you interacting with regularly? So as I said, we're not worried about drawing skills at all. It uh, is about exploration and discovery. So you choose what details matter. And uh, I could draw this same map again in, uh, you know, and have a whole bunch of other things, different things in here, because I'm missing, I'm missing so much in here. Um, but, uh, but you can see some of the stories on here. We have a snapping turtle nest right there in our rain garden. Whoa. So I label that. I know where buddy nest is in the neighbor's yard because People know I like <laughs> nature and we're always outside walking. And uh, now they share with me these things. When the bunnies make a nest in their yard, he let me know. <laughs> and uh, so just the important parts of, uh, you know, of, of my life and my area where, uh, you know, with my family. Here's after, after a walk, we'll sit and chat uh, on the, in the front of our yard with, uh, you know, my sister's family because my sister lives just down there, very close. And um, yeah, so I look at this and there's just uh, so many different memories that it brings, brings up for me, even though it's messy, screechy, tossed together. Um, clearly things don't look like trees so much, but uh, this is where the bunny hides in the backyard. Um, and it's, it's my home and it's important and um, yeah, so I want to, I want to remember things. Uh, let's see, we got another one here. Oh, okay. And so with the map, I love, I love maps. Um, I love maps that other people do. I like doing maps. Um, and so there were so many different places around my block that I didn't manage to squish into that first map. So I went back and I, um, I did uh, well, on one area that's really important to me that we've been going to. And so I kind of zoomed in on that area, the near, and you know, and then far you can pull back and do, do more. Um, and again, don't worry about scale when you're, when you're drawing this, whatever. Um, so this is down by Red Rock Lake, which is not part of Nine Mile Creek Watershed District. It's part of uh, Riley Purgatory Bluff Creek, yeah, watershed district. Um, but on here, we've been visiting this lake. It's a couple, you know, it's just around the block from my house. Um, and there is a, a trail here that is a public trail path to this Red Rock Conservation Area, but isn't really marked. And one day I just, I kind of like discovered it some years ago and I was like, that looks public. And so I just walked down there <laughs> And um, it's just so wonderful to have even this little bit of access to the water. Um, and so on this map, um, I have the green frogs and leopard frogs kind of are down by the shore. We saw like six yesterday night, we counted six. And, um, and we've seen herons and ducks and all the little fish nests. So I could go and once I have this map, I can go later and write about each of these different things and um, what it means 
to me and like these turtle nests that we we saw the turtles laying their eggs and uh it's so cool so hopefully they survived this one had uh i don't know something feasted on a few of the eggs um and i don't know why but there was a pair of lost sunglasses down there and i remembered it so onto the map it went um so these are all just interesting important places to me sunsets over there um this is a old dead oak tree it's tall it's taller than me it's like six feet tall and we call this the tree bob gnarly dubbed from my husband decided to name it bob gnarly and you know our family our kids we all say hi to bob gnarly whenever we walk past and we knock on the wood boom 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 and it's it's kind of hollowed out inside you know bees or ants or whatever other critters have been in there it's a, it's a funny, silly thing that, uh, you know, makes all of this home to me. So, um, and with your maps, you could do maps, um, you know, uh, how do these places and your maps change either daily, weekly, monthly? Um, what, uh, yeah, what do you see? What, what, um, what gets different? So, oh man, all right. Well, I only have a couple things left, and I think, I don't know, let's see. All right, some resources. Uh, first, this um, this picture is of a, a, what do you call that, a boardwalk um, at Cardinal Creek Conservation Area in Eden Prairie, right behind Discovery Point in Nine Creek Watershed District. And um, so that there, it's very lovely. And I think I, I'm still like your trail maps. I'm still discovering um, after how many years, you know, 20 years in my city, I'm still discovering different nature trails and it's just so much fun. Um, I have a list of different field guides here. Uh, oh, birds, mammals, trees, wildflowers. They're nice compact little books all by Stan Tekela, um, that I use all the time, very handy. Um, but uh, I just, you don't have to know, you know, the common name to appreciate the beings um, that are that are around you. You can name them Bob Norley if you want. Um, so it's really just noting where you are. And, um, one of the best books, the best guide books that I ever got was this Common Backyard Weeds of the Upper Midwest because she puts in those plants, you know, weeds as defined by, you just don't want them there. But um, that, you know, so these, these other plants aren't appearing under trees or wildflowers or, you know, different grasses or something. And uh, so I love getting that one. There were so many things I was able to identify what the different plants were in my, uh, in my yard. Um, and some you want to leave, some you want to pull, and how do you do that? And so, um, that's one of my favorite guidebooks. Um, also for, for going outside and writing, um, you know, check with their watershed districts. Um, I think Nine Mile Creek has, you know, where all, you know, their locations are. Where's parks, where can you go be by, um, you know, by the different, uh, bodies of water. And, uh, trail map and like i'm still discovering trails and paths in my city I said that already. um okay well i think i went fast because yeah all right well okay i'm gonna try to go back in so thank you so much for being here i could go on <laughs> um but i i hope that you would take this opportunity to take your journal or a notebook and go outside, um, you know, and just sit, write down what you see, what you hear, and I will take questions. Great, thank you oh. so much, Amber. Hi, Gail. <laughs> Hi, that was wonderful. I just love like hearing about, you know, there are so many different resources, but you don't have to know the common names. You can just, you know, make up your own name. And I love doing that because it really gets you into the place where you are and it really like helps you form connection with it. So I really appreciated that um, part of your presentation. 
We've had um, at least one question come through and I'll just read it out to you here so that those coming in on the phone can hear as well. Um, it's talking a little bit about how do you just kind of keep yourself going when you're not sure that you're good enough or like how do you convince yourself to go out and sketch if you are having troubles with that? Ah, um, I think I see that. <laughs> I like some of the names people chose for themselves. It's <laughs> very sweet. Um, how do I convince myself to sketch? Um, well, golly. I, it took a while. I actually I had the list of of all the things written for a while here. I had a whole, you know, I had my like, places for neighborhood map. I had it there and I must have sat with that two nights in a row and not known how to start the sketching. And then I was finally like, well, I have to do this presentation, so I better sketch. Um, and so I just drew some lines and then I really it was starting with what was important to me. What did I want to remember? What? Uh, yeah, with, you know, the rain garden, the caterpillars, um, our decorative grasses. Oh, we got a bee nest in the backyard underground, which is. Well, my husband got stung discovering it, but now we just leave it alone. Um, but I went, I would go back there and you could like hear them buzzing under the ground and I wanted to remember that. So that went into the sketch, even if it's a little. I just tried to not worry about it. <laughs> so. Yeah, that's that's most of that. Great, thank you. Um, a couple more questions have been coming in here. Um, a few people have been just saying how cool it is to get some new ideas and someone's going to take their hammock out, which is really exciting. Um, another question that's coming through here is, are there other places you've shared your writing or these practices? Oh, um, uh, good question. Um, well, I have a number of different writing groups that I have shared writing with. I've only published a couple of things, um, short things. Um, oh, I have a blog, which I might get back into. <laughs> it's been a while. Um, but um, some of this is, is I share with my kids. And um, at these, as far as like, I guess, this kind of method, this practice, uh, other than I've done a couple other writing nature nearby workshops, this uh, having to condense a, a two hour class to a 30 minute webinar really made me need to focus in. What do I want to say? What do I hope um, people get out of this? What do I want you to take from it? And that was actually turned out to be a good exercise. So thank you. Thanks, Amber. Uh, we do have two people who are calling in, and so I wanted to see if they had any uh, questions as well. So I'm going to open up. I okay. did mute you when you come in, um, you folks on the phone, but I'm going to try and open up your mics now <laughs> and we'll see how that works. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So there's a 972 area code. Um, I'm going to hopefully open that up. Um, and unfortunately, it looks like that is not working. So sorry about that for folks on the phone. Um, if you want to, you can also text questions to me. Um, that number is 952-658-9104. Or you could email them to me at gzemble at ninemilecreek.org. I'm the one who sent out the emails for you. So. Um, send those in if you have them, folks on the phone. Otherwise, I'll just keep going down the list here of people who are typing in questions. And the next one is, where do you get inspirations for different prompts? Oh, for different prompts, inspirations. Um, uh, you know, a good a good number of the ones that I have in here, I think, you know, the I see, I hear, those are, you know, really basic. Um, I just write things down when I think of them. So uh, like the sketch of nature map of your neighborhood was just thought about. Um, I'm curious about it was just things I try to. Oh, how do I get inspiration from prompts? Or, um, the writing groups I'm in generate prompts, generate a lot of different prompts. So I think I've had practice 
kind of generating prompts that I think will kind of lead somewhere and that some do and some don't at different times. And it just, um, yeah, but a lot of it is just being outside and paying attention. And what am I interested in? What do I want to know more? What do I want to remember? So that's, you know, and, and I have a notebook that I write these things down. So thank you. I hope that answered the question. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Um, next question here is, let me just look through my list here. Uh, what is the purpose of your writing? That's kind of an interesting question. Oh, wow. The purpose of my writing. Okay, we are we're digging deep here. Um, well, I write for a lot of different reasons. So there's a lot of different purposes. Um, and I think what I'm discovering is that the purpose of my writing for many, 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 many years has been just for myself. Um, understanding who I am, what, what I love, um, what I want to pay attention to, what I want to learn. Um, and also, purpose of my writing, I'm trying to make the transition now to reaching an audience. And it, it's a different, it's a different skill. <laughs> um, and so I've been learning that. And so working on my memoir, trying to find a way for not just writing for myself, for my own understanding, um, but something that will reach another person and, you know, enlarge their world or deepen their understanding of themselves or nature. So hope that answered the question. Yeah, thank you. Um, I love these comments. I'm just scrolling like, it's good that you give me the questions, but it's, I love seeing the comments of people. So yeah. Thank you. These are so great to see people being brave and courageous, taking their writing and their sketching. I love it. This is amazing. Um, oh, here's another one. Uh, when you bring a dog, are you able to journal or engage your kids for help? Just wondering. <laughs> um, I do have a dog. Um, I don't do all my journaling outside on the walks. <laughs> um, sometimes it just has to happen afterwards, especially like um, right now we're doing a lot of a lot of family walks and uh, yeah, that I would find it impossible. But I did go down with my nephew to um, to the lake, the Red Rock Lake that I showed you, and we sat down there and did some um, I did some journaling and talking with him and writing and that was good. So one on one that works. Um, but I, I guess, yeah, I don't. Um, I don't tend to do. Uh, yeah, I should write with other people outside more often. Good suggestion. <laughs> um. I, while we're having a few more questions come in here, I just wanted to mention that uh, you had referenced our trail maps in your presentation, so thanks for doing that. Um, if you would like to find those on our website, they're at ninemilecreek.org, and then you can go into the resource library, which is up at the very top, and then just search trail map, and it should get you to a PDF version of that, since our office is not open at this point, unfortunately, to get physical copies. Um, but if you'd like, we can always send you one in the mail. Um, just uh, send me an email and let me know. Um, we have time for a few more questions, so if you have any more, please send those through. And um, in the meantime, I know that Amber has a few more parting thoughts for you, but if you do go out with your handmade journal, um, whether it's the one that Amber made or one that you make or that you make together with your family, please tag us. We'd love to see that. Um, I'm sorry, I'm trying to get all the technology <laughs> thing out here. Uh, if you do go out, yeah, please take us. We'd love to see your photos of you with your journal and your families. Um, we are on Facebook, Nine Mile Creek Watershed District, and we're also on Instagram, um, hashtag NMCWD, which is just our acronym, Nine Mile Creek Watershed District. So yeah, please feel free to tag us. We'd love to see those pictures and your nature journal experiences. OK, uh, last questions from anybody. Feel free to send them in. Otherwise, I'm going to turn it back to Amber for parting thoughts. So thank you, everybody. 
Um, yeah, I wrote down what I was going to say and then I forgot. Um, the resources, they'll, uh, Gail will put this up, this video, because it's recorded. <laughs> then I'll get to see it. Um, <laughs> um, the, the page that had resources, I will be sending Gail um, a file with those resources and my contact information um, and also a few other books, just, you know, great nature reading, stuff to read, other stuff about writing process, just a few other resources if you're interested. So I will send out that file and then that will go out with the, um, with the email about the recorded thing that Gail will do for you. <laughs> but uh, yeah, and you can always, um, I love to see if anybody wants to share. Uh, yeah, so I'm yeah. excited. I hope people, I want you to use, use the journal. Did I, oh, I forgot something I was going to say. Um, where is it? Here it is. Okay. Um, the not worrying about the, the drawing or the writing or whatever. Um, I would trade a beautiful unwritten in journal for one written in by my grandmother any day, no matter how messy. I wish she would have, I wish she would have just done it, but she couldn't get over the barrier of it not being perfect or not being able to organize her thoughts or something. And so use your journals, write in them, it's all cool. That's wonderful. <laughs> we had a couple more questions come in. Uh, one of them was, how long have you been nature journaling? Oh gosh. Um, well, okay. I've been journaling, uh, you know, since I was eight or nine, and 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 you know what? It's probably been a lot of nature journaling <laughs> uh, that I realized later on. I go through old writings, and there's there's lots of nature stuff in there as it is. Um, I guess for this specific sort of like this nature journal. Um, you know, a few years, a few years, like five years. I think my original one I made, oh, April 2016. So, a few years. Yep. Nice. Uh, next question that we have, I think these are kind of in the same vein about uh, the paper and the journals and the covers. Okay. Um, either where did you get them or how did you make them? Things like that. Yeah. Um, most of them that went out were um, pages, paper that I made, um, the Kozo and banana peels, uh, there was cotton, 100% cotton was from old clothes. And uh, just last year, I finished my book art certificate at the Minnesota Center for Book Arts. And so I did a lot of paper making, a lot of book binding, and some uh, letterpress. And so um, that's where those papers come from. I also made a few of the covers with cave paper which until recently was a local paper making um, place. And then also Mary Hark, um, I got some of the papers from her as well. But you can get those from either direct from the people or um, at the Minnesota Center for Book Arts, the shop has those, uh, those papers. Just one wonderful wide variety of, of uh, handmade papers available. So very fun. That's awesome. That sounds like a great course too. Um, yeah. You did mention that you had a blog. Do you want to talk a little bit more about that? I do. It's, uh, I have a website, uh, amberdstoner.com. Woo! <laughs> uh, that's, that's all it is. .com. And it has been a while since I put anything up there. Um, but, uh, but it's on my list of things to get back to. Now that I managed to pull this presentation together, I can think about other things. So um, yeah, I do hope to get to get back to that. But there's uh, nature stuff on there. Um, so yeah. Apologies, I just typed it in wrong. Oh, um, yes, you did. <laughs> here we go. I'm going to type it in the announcements correctly. AmberDStoner.com. Uh, yep. Yes. Yep. So there is that. Thank you okay. all for the comments. This is just, this is really wonderful to scroll through all these and, and see the comments. So thank you. Oh. Yes. Um, okay, well, we wanted to leave a little bit of time for you all to get outside and use your journals and practice with them. So uh, Amber, do you have any last parting thoughts for everybody? Oh, 
go feel the breeze on your arms and then write about it. <laughs> Here we go. That's that's all I got. <laughs> thank all right. You, thank you all. Thank you, Gail. Thank you, everybody. How many people ended up signing on? We did have about 21 at total count. All right. Yeah. Thank you all. Yes, and thank you everybody for joining in. Um, right before we end off here, um, I will again send out the recording and the uh, resources. And then uh, we did have one last question come through, Amber. Can I still get a handmade journal? I've been wondering about that. Um, <laughs> right now, I need to, well, OK, here's the thing. If you want the handmade piece of paper for the cover, that's going to be a little while. I'm going to be making paper in August. I can do it in my driveway. Um, but uh, as far as a handmade journal, yeah, you know what? I can do that if you don't mind. I got pretty paper that's not handmade paper, but it's still pretty. And uh, I would be able to make some. So yeah, maybe email me. <laughs> Um, yeah. Well, how about this? We can um, we can work out a way for that to happen, um, and I'll send out instructions on how that process will work with my follow up email. Um, that way, you don't have to remember instructions right now. So, um, yeah. All right. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Woo! With that. <laughs> We will be signing off for the night. Please go use your journals, feel the breeze and notice the nature nearby and write about it and let us know if you feel like sharing that experience. Please do. We would love to see it. Good night, everybody. <laughs>